Hey everyone, welcome to Professor Long's Lectures in Anatomy and Physiology. We're going to be going over some of the bones of the skull. This is a picture that I have posted from my Canvas page uh, of the skull. That's a drawing that was made that shows you a, a number of the bones that we're going to be covering. I like to cover them here this way first, and then I can show you on the model so that you can try to put the two together. Um, now, <clears throat> if you're trying to find these pictures, let me just show you this. Uh, if you go into your Canvas dashboard, you go into my Human Anatomy and Physiology 1 course, and you go into the, uh, it's going to be in the modules. I haven't finished building the module yet, but in those modules are pages. And if you scroll down, there will be a link in the module that's going to say Skull Images. And I'm going to have some skull videos that you can watch. But if you go into the Skull Images, there's several drawings. Now, for some reason, I have this one on here twice. I don't know why. But if you download these, then they'll pull up. We have an anterior or frontal view of the skull. And I have a lateral view of the skull that we can start learning from. Now, the reason I have my camera at this odd angle is because there's a hot spot from the projector. There's a bright white ball on the screen, and I'm trying to eliminate that. So. Now, my way of teaching the skull is a little bit different than everybody else's. I do things a little bit uniquely, okay? I'm going to start with this picture so that we can start learning some of the bones of the skull. Now, if you're in my class, as you guys know, these videos are intended for students who are enrolled in my classes. If you're in my classes, we're going to follow the um, list of things to know or your laboratory guide, but I simply call it the list of things to know. The skeletal system is going to start on page... 15 where we start listing some structures for some histology of the skull and we're going to do those structures later on together We're actually going to be bouncing between pages 16 and 17 on the list of things to know. I think that's the page numbers now We have reference to the page numbers here that are in your lab manual if you have the current lab manual So if you want to study the orbit and the sutures of the skull they're on page 149 the frontal bones on page 154 so we tell you where to find the information in your laboratory manual if you have the latest one. If you don't, it's just a page or two off. Now, um, some people teach a bone and all of the landmarks on the bone. So I want you to pay attention here. We're gonna learn all the major bones of the body. There's 206 of them. Many of them are paired up. So if you know the right humerus, you know the left humerus. So that reduces the list by a lot. And if the entire test was identify the bone, identify the bone, identify the bone, that would be very easy. But every bone has landmarks on them. There's bumps and holes and grooves and ridges and every little landmark, every groove, every part of the bone, every opening, every thing sticking out, every corner, every part of the bone has its own name. If we did that, there are thousands of structures we'd have to learn and, and you know, it just take years to do that. We got just a few weeks. So here's how I like to do things. Rather than follow the list the way it's written by learning a bone and then learning the landmark on it, learning the next bone and all of its landmarks, first I'd like to be able to name all the bones. If you look at your list of things to know for my class, the structures that are in bold on this page usually are the bone. And the number next to it in parentheses tell you how many of that bone there are in the skull. Like there's one frontal bone, one occipital bone, two parietal bones, two temporal bones. And then the skull continues over on the next page, one sphenoid, one ethmoid. We're going to learn the bones of the skull first, and we're going to learn some of the ones on the bottom of page 17. And then in another video, I'll go back and we'll start learning some of the landmarks, slowly but surely. Okay? It's going to be a lot of structures. It's going to be daunting and intimidating. Don't be scared. Don't be intimidated. Learning to memorize long lists of things is pretty easy if you follow a simple technique. I've discussed this before in how to study in some of my how to study videos. Your brain can remember between four and seven things. So break it down in a specific number of structures, four, five, or six. Repeat them in the exact same order and touch them with your hand. It's part of our learning process and how your brain maps information. Repeat them until you can't stand it and then add four more. Go back to the beginning and then see if you can do all eight. 
I'm going to show you all that as we're learning the skull, because this is where my students really learn how to study if you haven't learned how to study yet. So I'm going to start with um, all of these structures. We're going to start working our way through them. Now there's one on this drawing, this is somewhat of a crude drawing, but there's a little line that's missing here that should be right there to complete one of the bones. So if we start to go through the list, there's, there's several bones that make up the cranium of the skull. And these lines that separate two bones are referred to as suture lines. Your skull develops from 20-something um, bones that all grow together and fuse. They start off as small bones, they get bigger and bigger and bigger and fuse into one large structure, okay? Now, we're gonna learn some of those suture lines, but for now, they're just sort of the border or the outline of the bone. This particular bone, which makes up your forehead here, we're gonna see it from another view also. I'm gonna put a little F on it because that is called the frontal bone. It's on the front of your skull. The word parietal means walls and the side walls of your skull on either side here would be called the parietal bone. If I continue to go backwards, this bone that makes up the back of your skull and there's some suture lines, there's sort of a V-shaped suture line, that's gonna make up the occipital bone. And then this bone right here, this large one all the way across here is called the temporal bone. It's where our temple is, which I think is derived from the term temporal. And some people say temporal bone, temporal, temporal, same difference. Frontal, parietal, temporal, occipital. Frontal, parietal, temporal, occipital. Frontal, parietal, temporal, occipital. Repeat it till you can't stand it. Frontal, parietal, temporal, occipital. Frontal, parietal, temporal, occipital. So that when you take a lab test and there's no labels, you can sit here and do this. Oh, this is frontal, this is parietal, this is temporal, this is occipital. When you're done with that, then you can move on and learn the next series of bone. There are two bones that make up part of our face here. And I'm going to draw something so that you can see this unfold. The socket where our eyeballs is, is called the orbit. And this would be your orbit right here where the eye is, okay? There are two orbits like this. And there's the nasal cavity where there's a bunch of bones that are going to be inside of here. Now it's a little bit hard to see this until you study a skull very up close and personal, but where the nasal cavity is, there's a bone that sticks up. There's a little suture line that comes down right here above the nasal bone. It comes over just a little bit and it comes down like this. It comes across here and it runs out to the side and it does this. There's another one on the opposite side that kind of does the same thing. And these are called the maxillary bones. And the maxillary bones also have a little hole in them right below the orbit. And there's a bone right here on the corner of the orbit that's kind of a funny shaped bone. I didn't draw it very well, but those can be called, <coughs> excuse me, called the zygomatic bone. And there's one on either side, okay? So if you touch this part of your face, you're touching the maxillary bones. If you touch the outer corners of your cheeks, those are called the zygomatic bones. And we can see them here. All of this one is the maxillary bone that your teeth are embedded in. And this little corner bone here is part of the zygomatic bone, okay? So frontal, parietal, temporal, occipital, maxillary, and zygomatic. And if you touch a skull, you can say frontal, parietal, temporal, occipital, maxillary, zygomatic, maxillary, zygomatic, okay? Now, there's another little suture line that runs right here and that creates two little bones here. The maxillary bone has a little piece that sticks up right in between the orbits, but there's two little bones on either side here. So not all of this is maxillary. There's two little bones here that would be called the nasal bones. I'm gonna put a little N, but that N is for nasal bones. And if we follow the nasal bone, which would be this one right here, there's a series of bones that go into the orbit and back out. And there's a funny saying that goes along with it that says, nice men leave early, silly. And it's gonna give you these bones in the order that you should learn them, nasal, maxillary, lacrimal, 
ethmoid and sphenoid. This bone is going to be called the ethmoid, and there's one that's called the sphenoid. It's spelled like this, but it's pronounced like sphenoid. Okay, it's the sphenoid bone, ethmoid and sphenoid. Okay, so now. If I start at the nasal bone, there's a piece of the maxillary bone that sticks up. That's why we have this here, nasal maxillary. There's a little bone right there called the lacrimal bone. And when you're studying the skull model, if I look down on the lacrimal bone, the lacrimal bone is going to be right inside the orbit, but it's got a little hole right inside here. You actually have to tilt the skull down and look on it. We're going to see it when we do the skull model. That hole is for a structure that absorbs your tears. The Latin term for tear is lacrima. And so, and if you speak Spanish, you know lacrima is the, the term for tear. So the lacrimal bone has the lacrimal canal, that opening where your tears would drain. So I have nasal, I have a piece of the maxillary sticking up right there. And then I have this little bone, I'm gonna outline it in red that's gonna come down and it's almost teardrop shaped inside the orbit. And that one's gonna be this little lacrimal bone, okay? Now, it's hard to see until you have a skull in your hands, but if I were to reach inside, when we look at the orbit, we tend to think of the orbit as like any kind of boxed off opening, but it's not. It's actually, there's two bones that are gonna go in and make a big V in here. And when I look at the orbit beyond the lacrimal bone, there's going to be two funny shaped holes here. Okay. One of those openings is going to be sort of a, an oval shape. And one of those openings is going to be a little hole. Okay. Those two openings are sort of the border. It's not quite like that, but there's sort of another little border in here where two bones meet up near those two openings. One of those bones is more medially located, just beyond the lacrimal bone, and that bone is going to be called the ethmoid bone. And then the outer wall out here is going to be called the sphenoid bone. And again, they're kind of wedge-shaped, and that gives us our nice man, leave early, silly. I left the lacrimal bone off here, but you would see it. So it's going to go nasal on the bridge of your nose, maxillary, a little piece sticking up, lacrimal, ethmoid, and sphenoid. And if I were to look here, I see nasal, maxillary, lacrimal, there's the little canal. And then right here, this bone is gonna be called the ethmoid bone. And then this one over here is the sphenoid. Now what's confusing about the sphenoid is we can see it from many angles. The sphenoid is a large bone that goes all the way across behind all of this. And all of the other bones are anchored to the sphenoid. But when we look at the outside of the skull, we see a piece of the sphenoid here. So as we go through the orbit, we're going to see this. I know this is not perfect. It's a little confusing, but it's nasal, maxillary, lacrimal, ethmoid, and sphenoid. I'm going to show you how to find them on the skull, okay? And I'm going to show you this from another view. So, so far, we've covered a lot of the bones of the skull. Frontal, parietal, temporal, occipital, nasal, and maxillary. And then we have the lacrimal, ethmoid, and sphenoid, okay? So we should be able to find all of those. Now I'm gonna erase a lot of this. I guess I could show you this while we're here. Obviously our jaw is called the mandible. The mandible is the entire jaw bone. We're gonna learn it later. And there's a few other bones, but I can't see them from these angles. So if we're studying the skull from the side, you should be able to run through frontal, parietal, temporal, occipital, nasal, maxillary, lacrimal, ethmoid, and sphenoid. If we're looking at it from the front, we're gonna see this done differently in the next picture that I'm about to project, okay? So hopefully you got all that information. Let me show you this next picture, excuse me while I step out of the frame. And we're gonna to go to an anterior view of the skull. And this is drawn because we catch a little bit of it at an angle, but this bone would be the frontal bone this would be the parietal bone. This is the temporal bone. Obviously, we don't see the ox occipital bone. It's at the back of the skull. You're going to have to practice pronouncing these and spelling them, so write them out as much as you can. And then this is where we get to sort of that nice man leave early silly. I'm gonna to try to color code these bones, but this is maxillary here. 
And this is the zygomatic bone. And if I see the maxillary, it has a hole in it, but it comes up and sticks up right next to these two. So if I were to color code these, this little pink bone, and I'm only gonna color code one side, but this little pink bone would be a nasal bone. This blue piece sticking up here, if I were to outline it, there's a maxillary bone that goes across like this. So this is part of your maxillary, where I color it in blue. Now, just inside that, there's a little piece of bone right here that's gonna have a hole in the bottom of it. That's gonna be the lacrimal bone. I don't like the way this drawing is done because they have the roof of the orbit, which is part of the frontal bone. I wish that wasn't there. I probably need to redraw it. But once I get past the lacrimal bone, this bone in red here is the one that I said is gonna be going back into the corner. It's called the ethmoid bone. And then this bone that I'm gonna do in purple here is all gonna be sphenoid bone. The sphenoid bone has two holes in it. There's sort of an oblong hole and a little round hole. And those are for nerves and tendons and muscles and things to pass through. But if I were to walk, walk my way from the nasal bone all the way into the orbit and then back out towards the zygomatic, it's nasal, maxillary, lacrimal, ethmoid, and sphenoid. 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 It's actually best if you get your hands on a skull. So uh, if you can, go purchase one. There's some available online. There's some available at one of our bookstores. I think it's called uh, uh, the Delmar Bookstore, or the Delmar College Bookstore. It's the one that's on uh, next to our college. You can go buy a plastic skull and start trying to learn these, or at least download the pictures and start labeling them, okay? So now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna project these two pictures of the skull for you, um, but they're in a different location than from my particular um, class, okay? And then we'll go over a few more structures in the next video. So let me erase all of this, and let me show you where to find the actual pictures of the skull. So let me minimize this. If you go back into your dashboard, I've had all of you add the anatomy and physiology resources page, and then you go to biology 2401 lab practical two, and you're gonna see the anterior view of the skull. So this is a pretty decent view of the skull. I hope that you can see it all there from the camera. And we can begin learning some of the bones. This is the frontal bone. And while it is hard to see, there is a suture line that's going to run right across, right about there. And there's one that's gonna run down here and right about there very faintly. So this would be frontal bone. We can see a little bit of the parietal bone here, but that's about it. Now, if I come across here, there's a suture line that runs here. It's gonna come down and it's gonna run right about there. Uh, that's not good enough. Runs right about there. And this is part of the zygomatic bone. So I have frontal. I'm not gonna see the parietal or temporal or occipital from here very well, but this is zygomatic. Now, this suture line right here outlines what we would call the maxillary bone. So I have nasal and I have my maxillary bone it has a nice little hole on either side and so there's a piece of the maxillary bone sticking up. If I look just inside the orbit there's going to be a little sliver of bone here that's going to have a hole that would be lacrimal the ethmoid, and then this is all sphenoid. The picture, the way this picture is taken does not show us the lacrimal or the ethmoid very well. But I can see a piece of the sphenoid here because here's one of the openings. Obviously we see the mandible, okay? Now, I'm gonna erase all of this because I want you to see another view of the skull. If I go to the next picture, it is going to be a lateral view of the skull, and I wish it was facing the same way that I had my drawing, but it's not. But you can see this little suture line here. I hope it appears in the video, but this would be frontal. This would be parietal. Near the back of the skull, there's a suture line that comes down here, 
This would be occipital. And there's a suture line that runs right about here, this little jagged edge, which would be the temporal bone. And there's an outline here. It's a little hard to see, but this is a piece of the sphenoid bone. And I'll show you in a color-coded picture uh, in a little bit what that is, okay? Now, the frontal bone comes down and comes across. This is zygomatic, and this is maxillary bone. If I were gonna do all of this, there's a little piece of the nasal bone here, maxillary bone there. There's a little piece of the lacrimal bone, but I can't see the ethmoid very well from this angle. So hopefully you're being able to see all of these structures and look at the pictures as closely as you can. I know it's probably hard to see from the camera, but nonetheless, um, those are the major skull, uh, skull bones. Uh, there's a few that we cannot see yet, and I have to show you from a different angle. So let me erase this, and let me see what the next image looks like. This is a picture of the top of the skull. So you're looking down on top of the skull this way. This would be the frontal bone. You can see this suture here. Here are the two parietal bones. By the way, we're gonna start learning some of the landmarks and this suture is called the coronal suture because it would be a coronal section. This is called the sagittal suture because it would be a sagittal section of the skull. Let me look at the next slide and I think we're gonna wrap up some of this and start another video. We don't want to do the inside of the skull just yet. There's a lot of complex stuff. Um, this is a little bit of, of a hard picture to look at. It's a little tough to see. But we're looking underneath the skull here. So now, this is someone's mandible. This person is facing up towards the ceiling. This is one of our plastic skulls. This is a real human skull. No, that's a plastic one as well. Part of the roof of the mouth is part of your maxillary bone here. At the very back of the maxillary bone, I don't know how well you can see this, but there's a suture line that runs across here and one that runs right down here. This would be part of your maxillary bone that your upper teeth are embedded in. It makes part of the roof of your mouth. But at the very, very, very back of the roof of the mouth, there's two little bones here called the palatine bones, or some people say palatine. Just don't put an S in there, palatine. Those are the two palatine bones. This is all occipital bone, and the rest of the bones are hard to see from this view, okay? But I wanted to show you the, the palatine bones, all right? Now, hopefully, that's a decent introduction to all of the skull bones. So you can see at the top, we have the orbit and the sutures, and I've covered the coronal and sagittal suture. I'll cover them again. We've done the frontal bone, the occipital bone, the parietal bone, and the temporal bone. We've done the sphenoid and the ethmoid. We've done maxillary and zygomatic. We've done the nasal bone, the lacrimal bone. We have not done the inferior nasal concha, but we will eventually. We've done the palatine bones, and I have not shown you the vomer. Although you can see where the air would blow through here, and these are the palatine bones. This bone coming right down the middle here is part of the vomer. I'll show you from another view. All right? So listen, start with that. Just start learning the major bones of the skull. Take your pictures, go down and download all these images, print them. I'm gonna, try, I'm gonna try to go back to the first one. I know it's a little tedious, but print these pictures and see if you can practice labeling them or go into my uh, canvas shell, download these pictures and see if you can practice labeling them and or coloring them so that you can begin seeing all the bones. I hope you had some fun while we did this. I hope you had as much fun as I did. There's lots more bone videos to come, so I'll see you in the next one. Start practicing, do it till you can't stand it, do it till you understand it, and then do it till you can teach it to someone else without looking at your list of things to know, and you'll be ready for the lab test. Lots more to come, see you in the next video.